Uh, welcome to this uh, lesson. We are looking at the second theory of uh, crime and deviance. Remember in the previous lesson we talked about uh, the anomie theory. So today I want us to look at uh, control theory. So the theory was uh, developed by Walter and also Travis. Their names are there. Uh, what do they say in line with why people engage in uh, criminal uh, activities and also uh, deviate maybe from the norms of the society? So the word control here is uh, used uh, to explain uh, that aspect. So they say that uh, people will want uh, at least some time to engage in uh, deviant uh, ways or maybe criminal activities, but not all of them will have to do so. So what is that thing that is making them or that is preventing them not to engage in criminal activities or maybe to engage in criminal activities? So uh, Walter talks about uh, the control uh, uh, aspects within an individual. So the human mind is uh, made up of uh, these uh, instincts. So remember instincts are just uh, uh, the natural forces that uh, operate uh, maybe the behaviors of an individual. So we call them the, the instincts, yeah? So they occur naturally, yeah? Have you ever thought of maybe uh, doing something bad, but you did not do it? That is as a result of the instinct. So there are two types of instincts within an individual. We have uh, the eros instinct, and we also have the uh, thanatos instinct. So, uh, Eros instinct is also referred to as uh, life instinct, and this one is referred to as uh, death instinct. Yeah, so life is good, death is not good. So, when you talk about Eros instinct, it's the one that will have to force this an individual to engage maybe in good behavior, and this one will have to force this person to engage in maybe deviant uh, behaviors. So, what happens with this instinct is that uh, they occur at the same time within the human mind, but one will have to be expressed at a time. So they cannot occur at the, or they cannot be expressed at the same time. And this explains why you cannot be good, and at the same, same time, you are also bad. So you are either good or you are either bad. But this one depends now on the these natural forces. So. This uh, Eros instinct is the one that will have now to compete with the, the Thanatos, con uh, uh, Thanatos instinct for dominance. So the one that will have to dominate is the one that will have to be expressed. Yeah, I know uh, sometimes back you have uh, engaged maybe yourself in a certain activity that is not good, for example stealing. It could be even uh, stealing vegetable. Yeah, so you did that. But during that time you are stealing, there was something that was communicating to you do it. Another thing was telling you not to do it. Then uh, another thing told you, no, just do it because uh, uh, your mother is not in. And uh, in case maybe they realize that this thing is not there, you can say that no, it was another person who took it because they did not see. That is in line with the communication that takes place within your, within your mind. Then uh, at the end, you are now forced now to, to do it. And that is why we are talking about uh, the Thanatos instinct. So that behavior was not good. And the instinct that dominated was Thanatos instinct. Or at times it tells you not to do it. What is uh, this thing that is now forcing you not to do it? It is the Eros instinct. So it's responsible for good behavior within, uh, within uh, individuals. So according to Walter Reckless uh, control theory, both inner and outer controls work against uh, deviant uh, tendencies. So we are looking at both inner and outer controls. So the inner controls are in line with the instinct, but we also have the outer controls. So the outer controls here could be maybe, oh, if I steal or if I engage in that behavior, uh, my friends will know and they might avoid me. So I don't want to lose my friends, so I will not engage in such kind of behavior. That one is now the outer control. Or if I steal, I will be arrested by the police. And I might also be taken to court and charged with the, with the same, same uh, maybe a criminal offense. So I'm not going to do that. Or if I do this, we have the norms of the society. Yeah? The norms of the society, which also dictates some punishment that you'll have maybe to, 
uh, to be given are in line with the behavior that you have portrayed. So if I do this, uh, the community might disown me. So I'm not going to engage in this behavior. So these are now the, the outer controls, which now restrict an individual from engaging in criminal or maybe deviant, deviant activities. So the theory we say that uh, people may want at least some of their time to act in deviant ways, but most of them do not engage in such kind of behavior. So they have various restraints, that is internal controls, such as their conscience, their instincts, their values, their integrity. Remember, this is uh, maybe the son, maybe of a pastor, and if you do this, what will happen? So you are going to ruin the reputation of maybe uh, maybe your family like that. So those are just some of the uh, internal uh, restraint and also morality and also that desire to be a good person. So you desire to be a good person and because of that, you not engage in uh, maybe behaviors that might uh, uh, ruin maybe that uh, position that you hold in the, in the society. We also have uh, the outer control such as the police, the family, friends and also religious authorities. So Travis noted that uh, these inner and outer restraints, they are the ones that form a person's self-control. So the two, that is inner and outer uh, controls, are the ones that will have to form the concept of what? A person's self-control. So if those two are present, then you are also in a position to control yourself. So this concept of self-control is the one that prevents an individual from acting against the social norms. So the key to developing self-control here is proper socialization, especially during early, maybe in childhood. So socialization now plays a key role when enhancing this self-control. So there is socialization. So socialization in this case could be uh, the process in which uh, an individual is now introduced to the norms of the society or maybe the culture of the society. So if you are brought up in that particular style that you are supposed to conform to this, that is what you are going to do. But if you are not taught such kind of uh, maybe uh, norms of the society, you might also find yourself engaging in deviant behavior because you are not socialized. Or if you are socialized also to uh, violate the norms of the society, you will also find yourself also engaging in criminal uh, activities as an adult. So children who lack this uh, self-control, uh, they may grow up to commit crimes and other uh, deviant behaviors because there was no uh, socialization. Remember I've said that socialization is what uh, plays a key role in enhancing uh, self-control. And this self-control also comes from what? the inner and also the outer uh, controls. So that's in line with the, the anomaly, uh, with the social control uh, theory. So I want you to go ahead and do more research in line with the, the strength and also the weaknesses of the theory. But I have shared some of the notes, so you'll have to go through them, but uh, remember you need to add more in line with the same. Thank you.